Hey guys, what's up? John here from FlyMikeAlpha.com, and today I'm here with Tori. We're going to show you what it's like to fly an airplane with an engine mounted above you. So we got this high-mounted engine in back of us, and it's pushing a lot of thrust backwards, and it's also really up high, so it's pushing the nose of the aircraft down, really trying to push the nose down. So we've got a lot of trim up as we're cruising level flight here. So we're cruising along here about 90 miles per hour, at about a good cruise power setting. And as we're flying here, straight and level, if this engine were to just quit on us, Watch what happens. We won't touch the stick at all. We're just going to go ahead and bring the power back to idle. Power comes back to idle, and the nose comes way up on us, about 20, 25 degrees nose up. Now, because the airplane gets slow, it does lower its nose. We have a forward center of gravity. Our center of gravity is in front of our center of pressure. So it goes through some oscillations. It's a stable airplane. It's not going to flip on its back. It's not going to stall on you, but it's going to pitch way up, and it could be kind of alarming the first time you do that, especially if you're a newer pilot. So it's something to be really aware of. You can see how we're just going through these nice gentle oscillations here. Now, if I add power back in as we come back up here, if I go back to cruise power without touching the stick, watch what happens to the nose. We go down, and we almost go negative G. Feel yourself lifting up out of the seat. So it's something to be very aware of. That's why it's really a two-handed airplane. And you're always on the controls. It's not quite as relaxing to fly maybe as a 172, but it's certainly a really fun airplane to fly, rewarding, and not dangerous in any way, but something to be very aware of. Think about if you get slow here. We'll do a little clearing turn before we go into this maneuver. If we were to get slow and we're about to do, say, a water landing or something like that, we have power all the way back to idle. We'll go ahead, get our flaps in here to 10 and to 20. If I'm approaching at my normal speed there, we got a little stall horn we'll ignore. If I get nice and slow, and then add power for a go-around, we can see how the nose shoves down. So right when you're about to land, if you're coming in and you decide, oh my gosh, I want to go around, the nose will shove down on you and you have to be ready to pull back on it. So it's really a two-handed airplane. As you add power in, you pull back on the controls and you notice I can add power and the nose doesn't move at all. That's totally fine. So as long as you're ready with the back pressure and you're trimmed appropriately when you come in, take off or land, that's what really matters here. So part of what makes that so significant, the uh, application of power, when you're really slow and you shove power in, the nose is going to flop forward. When you're really fast and you take the power out, the nose is going to raise a ton because when you're really fast, you have a ton of lift off your tail that's counteracting the engine being mounted up high there. So reducing power is more noticeable at higher airspeeds and adding power in is more noticeable at slower air speeds. Any questions on that? No, yep, pretty straightforward. Sounds pretty good. Cool. You got the flight controls? My flight controls. Your flight controls. Go ahead and we'll do a little clearing turn back the other direction. Let's take a southbound heading now. And we'll do some slow flight and some stalls. 